You are listening to the Intelligent Vocalist Podcast, episode 142. Welcome to the Intelligent Vocalist with John Henney. This is the podcast dedicated to help you be a smarter, better, more informed singer. And now, your host for the Intelligent Vocalist, John Henney. Hey there, this is John Henney. Welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Vocalist. I do so appreciate you spending your precious listening time with me. All right, today I am speaking with Alex Mendoza. Alex is a very talented young musical theater performer, and I first worked with Alex when he was 15 or 16, and he has gone on to a solid career in musical theater. And the reason I wanted to talk to Alex today is he just has a wealth of experience in this field and also what it's like to be out there on the road. Um, I know everybody thinks that musical theater is the glitz and bright lights of Broadway, but there are a great number of highly dedicated, very talented people who are out on the road in major productions of shows. And Alex is currently touring with Phantom of the Opera. Uh, I believe he's done Dubai, uh, Singapore, the Philippines. And when I was speaking with him, he was just about to leave for Korea. So um, it's certainly a it can be a very exciting career, but there's there's also a lot of work to it as well. So um, I hope Alex's story is instructive for you. And without further delay, I bring you Alex Mendoza. Alex, welcome to the Intelligent Vocalist podcast. (laughs) Thanks for having me. So happy to have you here. I uh, want to know your quick vocal history. When did you first get uh, interested in singing? And when did you know you wanted to do this for a living? Uh, when I was nine in a uh, high school production of Oliver and I still didn't know if I could sing. Uh, but a voice teacher told my parents, he's got a really nice voice. And if this is something he's enjoying, maybe that's something he should start working on now because I was a boy soprano and we were headed into that time where my voice was going to change. But then I think around 15, 16, my drama teacher in high school said, this is something you actually could do. And then the, the dreaming aspect of it, of, Oh, I, I can do this. I do want to do this Um, because it wasn't something I thought that could be on my radar. Uh, I thought it was something you just did for fun. And then I started doing research. I was like, oh, there's schools for this. And this is what I do want to do. So around 15, 16 is when I was like, this is this is the goal. And then at at that point, um, how was your voice dealing with the the dreaded change? Oh, um. Uh, if I say like the Brady Bunch episode where Peter Brady, like <laughs> I only went through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, only a couple times that, that happened. Mine changed quickly, but it, I feel it wasn't as torturous because my parents put me immediately in uh, voice lessons. Um, and I had a teacher at the time because I hadn't gotten to you yet because you got me right after my voice had changed somewhat. Yeah, yeah I was 16. I'm- yeah, I'm, this is a little while back, yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember just thinking what a wonderful voice you had. Thank you. But it was it was starting to stop at about the E F above middle C. I think. Well, I used to cry over high G's. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't cry to you. I just cried when I got home. I was like, oh yeah. I think it was um we we were doing Lost in the Wilderness from Children of Eden, mm-hmm. and I kept cracking. And I think you helped me. Um, the last it's a G and found. And I think what was the what placement did you have me do? The uh, f- f- oh f- probably f- like f- f- yeah f- probably had you just sing fun for f- a few fun. times. It was fun. Yeah. It was fun. Um, and uh, but I I I got very frustrated because I I remember thinking um, my voice changed. It was stopping at E and F. I wanted to be in Phantom, and well, Phantom sings a G and higher, and now I'm crying because I can't hit it. And you think at you think at 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, forever is it's never going to happen. And it's that eternal, that word, never. And now I look back and go, wow, on days I'm not feeling that well, geez, are still not hard, but I should have been patient at the time. And that's, uh, I often tell um, young men, 
Time is part of this. Yes. It's, it's you, you, you train and you get better technically, but the, the clock also has to tick off a little bit. And, and some voices mature at, at mm-hmm. different speeds, but you know, you, you had, well, you still have, but at the time, I just remember thinking just such a beautiful sounding voice that if you could just remain patient, it, it, will, it would all <laughs> work word. out for you. Yeah. I don't know if I'm patient now, maybe a little better. <laughs> But still. So then, so you got through the, the teen years and uh, off to college. Yeah. Uh, so I, I think I think because when I realized this is what I wanted to do and my parents, uh, like we were talking about earlier, they, they love theater. They love my brothers in sports. They appreciate all of it. That's knowledge they didn't have growing up because they didn't, they weren't singers and, but they were very supportive. But they said, if this is what you want to do and this is then you have to do the work that goes into it, which is you don't go to voice lesson and you go one time and that's done. Like you were saying that Instagram moment we were talking about, it's not about you have to put in the work after the voice lesson and listen to the recording back. And so when I started talking to my teachers and working on monologues to, you know, new repertoire, when I was auditioning for college, it became a kid. You have to be good at all three. It can't just rely on one. You have to, you have to work on each and um, so I went, I did go to Boston Conservatory for a year, and then I transferred to Azusa Pacific University and just kind of switched gears just a little bit. Um, but it still was, when I got there, I was in voice lessons twice a week. And my, I remember my voice teacher uh, in the musical theater program, Carrie, she said, I'm putting your rep lesson at 930 in the morning. And I said, why? She said, because when you go do this for a living, you start auditioning you're going to have auditions at 10 a.m. And if you can't learn to sing this material and warm up properly and be ready by 10 a.m., then you're not doing the work. And I will always remember that. Uh, so now if I do have an audition at 10 a.m., I get up fairly early and start warming up properly and, and doing all the things that require. And so I'm, so that's something that has stuck with me, especially you know when you do eight shows a week and, and you get the phone call that you're going on for a lead at 2 p.m. You don't, I wake up for every two show day around 8 a.m. to start getting my body going. So that was kind of from high school. We jumped a little bit from high school to college to kind of life in general. Yeah. And yeah. when you reference the Instagram moment, that's because, <laughs> well, before we started recording, we were just talking about that people will spend time and money um, on the more fun things associated with with music. Sure. But the actual work that needs to be done, uh, they don't always find time for that. And that that's one thing I've, I've always uh, really appreciated about you, even from a young age, is you understood that you had to do the work. It's, it's not about the moment. Well, there was no Instagram then, but it's not about the moments. <laughs> What are you talking about? This Instagram. was last year. This was, <laughs> <laughs> this was recent, right? I'm only 20. I'm only 20. No, but you're still a young man. But um, yeah, it's not just about the, the glamorous moments. I mean, so mm-hmm. much of it, and, and it sounds like a cliche, but it really is just the toil, if you will, of, of putting in the road work, of getting up early, of practicing, of warming up all the time, mm-hmm. keeping yourself healthy. Um, yeah, I and, and I think that's what's been interesting um, uh, uh, about the the journey is that sometimes it's lonely. Sometimes, but if it's really what you want, it, I, my dad always says, um, "Work shouldn't feel like work if you truly love it. It's hard. It's not easy. But if you love it, it's worth the work." And um, if singing, I mean, for me, it's everything. I love it so much that it's worth the warming up. I enjoy oddly enough as much as singing the song because it's just getting it already. And, um, like I said, my, my parents in high school said, if this is what you want to do, like, uh, you know, I wish I'd been a better, uh, student in piano. Like I, I wish I understood that it was so important to today. Um, but my mom was like, you're not putting the work in. And if you want to be good at this, you have to put the work in. And I wasn't, and I wish I had. So with singing, I put in so much effort but then I realized that I also need to put that effort into the whole thing. Musical theater, it's the scene work and the how you even auditioning, learning oh, yeah. how to audition. And then vocally, you know, adding it all together of, of that off day where you have an, your agent calls you and you have an appointment the next day. And you're a little under the weather and you don't really get the option to decide, uh, well, I don't want, I mean, there's a different, if you really can't, you can't, but 
you got to do it. And how do you show up at noon the next day ready to go when you're a little tired without saying, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry, I'm not feeling well, and just bring in the technique. And that's what's been interesting lately of everything I've learned, you know, from you and and in school, um, that when you start understanding the anatomy of what's going on in your in your uh, your voice, your technique and you everything you've been trained comes into play and your body naturally just goes into it without overthinking and you can rely on your technique and the training behind it. But that's not overnight. I used to think I wanted it to be so quickly, especially when I was cracking on certain songs. (laughs) I wanted it now. Yeah. Yeah. And also it's, it's really important because as you pointed out, you can just get auditions thrown at you with, with no notice is to adopt a healthy lifestyle and an approach to your instrument. Mm-hmm. You know, the bass player can can still play with a hangover <laughs> most of the way, 99 percent, let's say. But vocalists, uh, that that affects your instrument. Oh, yeah. You know, it's silly as it is. I, we've talked. I love coffee so much. Uh, I have to keep track how much water I'm drinking in a day um, because I will forget because I love coffee so much and that will be in my car faster. So I actually have a. Uh, in my phone, a little calendar of, did you drink enough water today? Um, and I think that's been, that's been interesting. It's, but, you know, especially being on the road, you have to remind yourself, okay, I, you know, being, being a swing in phantom right now, um, I don't know what my life is going to be every day. You know, one minute I could be one of the leads or the next minute I'm a big movement role in the ensemble. I don't know. So I do try to go to bed by midnight at the latest sometimes and then get up at a certain time, go to the gym, make that part of my lifestyle of getting, taking my vitamins, not drinking as much coffee, being careful what I eat. And at first it was exhausting, but then I went, what is the goal in the long run to be a healthy singer, to do this successfully, um, so yeah, it was adapting to that um, that routine, and it just takes a minute to adapt to it. I will I will admit here for the first time, I just gave up coffee, and this is something <laughs> no, I never thought I would do. But I my my coffee addiction was just starting to be a behemoth. And oh, I think it, it was you, yeah, it was our conversation. You said I have this many. You need to cut back, Alex. I was like, uh oh. <laughs> like I, yeah, I'm on because I thought about. I was like, okay, John is drinking this much coffee. What am I? Act- oh yeah, oh, <laughs> it's a lot. Um, yeah, yeah. No. So so far, I'm I'm okay. White knuckling <laughs> a little bit, but but I'm okay. Uh, we'll see if I bring a little bit back uh, into my life. Mm-hmm. But coffee tends to to take over. <laughs> I yep, say I'm only going to drink this much, and the next thing I know, I'm just going all day. Yep. Yeah, but um, so. Explain for the listener, what is a swing? Uh, So a swing for a show is someone who has to learn. Typically, they can learn. They learn most of the ensemble. They are given a certain amount of ensemble tracks, as we call them, um, parts, or sometimes a role. So in the show, I cover one of the principals and about mm, five or six other men in the ensemble. So my job is to keep notes on all of them. And if one of them's sick or is going on for another role, because they also understudy the ensemble, I fill in that hole in the ensemble. So at any moment, there's been moments where you go on mid-show and you just have to be ready. And so the the blessing of the show is that um, we get to the, the five of us, we sing in a booth as well off stage because we're still part of the ensemble. And what has been really nice is that I take that opportunity, even on the days I'm really tired, to focus on my technique um, and take that moment, okay, so this song today is going to be a little harder. This song that's at the top of my range today, it feels a little heavier. So how do I, you know, go into the mechanics of my technique? How do I rely on that? And so, but at any moment, it could change. You know, one minute, you're one character, and then the next, I, I think I've been maybe three different people in one week and it just depends on what is needed. And, and that, so that's what a swing does is you're just ready at any moment <laughs> to go on for someone. Now, one of the, the main reasons I wanted to, to bring you on is I, I think you're just a, a beautiful example of a working actor. 
um, because very often times people when they go into musical theater think I have to be on Broadway, I have yeah. to be a star, and there's this whole world that's actually amazing mm-hmm. with all kinds of opportunity and um, opportunity to travel. Mm-hmm. And make a living doing what you're doing in wonderful productions. So, give me kind of give me a history after you got out of college. Um, how did your professional life begin? Well, m- mine was a little weird because patience was not a word I liked. So, and we were kind of talking about before we started rec- um, the podcast about um, the comparison game, and there the you know comparisons the thief of joy, and. I was grateful that I'd gotten an agent around 19 who, and I've been, I'm still with them and I really, really love them. And, um, they would send me out on things. And at first it was like, okay, I'm going to get into the ensemble of this and try to work there and, you know, networking. But it's still, I am guilty of at the time of at like 1920 of like, but like, isn't this big thing, the goal. And then I had a, so I would go audition and I take on, I would take ensemble everywhere. And so I finally learned quickly that it wasn't just about being the lead. It can't just be about that. When you're in high school, you know, probably a lot, a lot of your students, your kids, if, especially the ones with such big voices, they're probably the star at their mm-hmm. high school. And, um, my parents wanted me, uh, to go to school and learn that it's, you're not the star. Like it's, it's not all about you all the, <laughs> all the time. Right. And, um, so when I started auditioning, it was like, cool, I'm in the ensemble. Great. So I'm meeting people and it takes so much time. And then I think it was, let's see, when I went on tour with Mama Mia, um, that's when I started like realizing that, okay, so this is, this took a, a minute. It was about auditioning and, and, and going to everything and showing it prepared and, and I was so grateful. And I think the key is being grateful in the moment where you are. And if you're a working actor, you could be on Broadway one day. And that's amazing if you can keep going from Broadway show to Broadway show to Broadway show. But you also may go from Broadway to I'm going to go be on tour. Or I'm going to be on tour. Then I'm going to do a regional gig. Or I'm going to be off Broadway. And I have had students do exactly that. Yeah. And from, being proud. From Broadway of, to a regional tour to a local production. And, and being proud of what you're in. And, and you know, someone told me once... Uh, there was an agent, uh, agent friend I met recently. Uh, we talked about this recently. She said, I love seeing clients who promote their show, no matter how big or small it is and being proud of where they are, because I find them to be more interesting and more of a humble human being and that they, they're doing this to be an artist and to do the work. It is not about just this one one that the goal has been expanded because I, it's kind of, you're saying there's so many other opportunities. And I think if you narrow in only on that one thing, it's still a, it, it is, it's a beautiful thing, but you're going to get there and then you're going to say, okay, like, I think you said, you said this earlier, you're going to get there and be like, okay, now I've gotten this. Now what about this? And then what about this? And you're getting to that level a little higher. And then you're like, well, what about the next thing? And now you have your Tony award or whatever. And you're like, okay, but now how do I get an Oscar? So it just, I think it's being present in that moment and enjoying it even when it's hard. And we've talked about social media a bit. Social, me- social media makes it 10 times harder because you're sitting there comparing yourself to everyone else. And you've and you've certainly done leads yeah. in your career. I mean, uh, you you actually did uh, quite a run as uh, Beast <laughs> in Beauty Beast and the Beast. Times. Yeah, and, and, and on some really good uh, tours. I'm so grateful to have done that. And and you know, one I think that was nice. You know, you know, I was Beast this past summer in a great theater in Austin, and I loved it. And 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 it, I'm grateful to be a swing in Phantom. You know, I still. I'm part of the world. It's, it's just part of it. It's, you know, one minute you can be, again, you can, one minute you're the lead and next minute you're, you're in the ensemble. But something I've been trying to help, um, when I coach high school kids on auditioning for musical theaters, that everyone's as equally important to each other as the lead. The lead is just as important as the ensemble to the swing, to the crew. This, everyone is important. And that is cliche. and, And people think that's cheesy, but it's so true that, you know, the chandelier cannot go up unless there are other people who that's part of their art as well. Um, 
what I do is just as valuable as the Phantom and the Phantom is just as valuable as ever, the company. Like it's such a team effort and that's so cheesy. But when you think that in high school, like, oh, that's corny. I hear that in a Hallmark movie, but it's just the truth. And I think coming at that has helped a bit. And and I'm, I'm grateful that my parents have, you know, when I was impatient, they were, they were like, if you want this, work hard. You want work hard. And it's just as valuable. Every, you know, the, the, the work is valuable. Um, and I guess it's true. There's no small parts. <laughs> That's such, there are no small parts. And I mean, that is the the attitude that that people really need to take. Because mm-hmm. I and I I did a, a recent podcast on comparison, yeah, uh, comparing and and just how it will it'll just eat you up. It will sure. it will destroy you if you just keep looking around at what you don't have. And I mean. And you've been able to see some amazing parts of the world while working professionally. So what's, uh, where have you uh, had your passport stamped recently? Uh, we, I just got back from Dubai. Never thought I'd get to go to Dubai. Yeah. Singapore, Tel Aviv, um, the Philippines, getting to see how other people live, um, has been incredible. I mean, we meet like what's really cool the 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 fans overseas are so um the culture is so welcoming and kind like when you go do a show overseas when they're at the stage door it's not like it's not your normal fan it's so, thank you for coming and doing this for us we really appreciate there's like a genuine um energy about it that's really been nice um but 6 6 years ago you know when I was just super excited to be in Mamma Mia when we were in Kansas City, which was a great place, or or when we were in Dayton, Ohio, and I didn't think I'd get to be in Dubai six years later, and I was just happy to be touring the U.S. where Target was down the street. Like, I thought that was cool. Like, I could just hop to different Targets around the United States. I thought that was amazing. <laughs> but again, I didn't think six years later I'd, I'd get to, and I think um, one of the, something I've learned over time is to let how do I word this properly? There was a moment in t- years ago where if I was getting close to something or if I did get close, if I didn't get it, I'd let that make me sad and defeated. And then I don't know what switched exactly. You know, I think now I remember it was when I realized that people behind the table are rooting for you and they want you to succeed. And I was getting closer to things. I let that fuel me into enjoying this 10 times more than just sitting in the, Oh, you're critiquing me. Oh, you're putting me. No, you're not. You're, you're actually, you brought me in. You're cheering me on. You want me to succeed. And I've, it's hard, but I've started working on the, the criticism in your voices from the, your teachers. If you respect them, they want to help you. And it comes from that place. And so, yeah, I, I didn't think I'd be traveling like this. It's, you know, we go to Korea on Monday, so it's, I'm bouncing around the world. I didn't think, um, at 20, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> I didn't think at 28 that I'd seen most of the United States yeah. and a big part of the world. And I think when people are like, I will, I think it makes me sad. I will not do, I will not do a cruise ship. I will not do a non-equity tour. I will not do. And I'm like, why, why you, I will not do that regional theater. That's in that small town. And I sit there and go, but, why that doesn't make any sense like that's how you grow that's how you meet new people that's how you learn and and that's corny i guess but it's the truth like i've done theaters you know like beast in texas this beautiful theater and they put me up in this amazing apartment i was like wow and i've done shows where the people were nicest and i was staying in a dorm room you know and it just it was you know, you just never know. And it's just part of the business. Like you're saying, you have students who they're on Broadway one minute and maybe they're not the next or they're on TV or the pilot gets canceled and you just keep going. It's, it doesn't, I think it's back to that Instagram thing. If there's this polished look that we all put out there that it's, I'm fine and everything's great. And look at this filter. <laughs> it's great. And, and, um, yeah. So, and then, uh, <laughs> you're, you're going to be recording an EP. Are you cool with yeah. talking about that? Yeah, we could talk about that. Uh, it's a slow process. I mean, I know uh, you've done that before, right? You've gone like, uh, I just, for years I tried to make my own stuff and record it. And I realized that's just not going to work. And, um, while I've been on tour in this last year, there are certain songs that kept coming up 
by other artists. Um, we were to Adina Menzel and Josh Groban and, um, and they just kept popping up as what if I can make an EP that kind of ties my experience in touring and being a theater songs that keep coming up in my life that mean so much to me. And, um, and some of those artists kept coming up. So I was like, well, yeah, I want to, I had a friend who has a, a studio and I was like, I want to make an EP. And I didn't, re- I also didn't realize how popular it was to do covers on EPs, like a full album of different arrangements of songs we all know. Um, and I went, well, I'm never going to be Alphaba and Wicked, so I'm going to do Define Gravity. <laughs> this is my chance. Oh, to that's be, great. So, something like that, you know, like, yeah. because, because you can. Yeah. So, yeah. So that, but that, that's a, that's been a slow process. And, All right. So, yeah. But we can look forward to that. Yeah. Yeah. So where can people uh, find you on the web? You know, the only Instagram. <laughs> I okay. Love, I love that we talk about yeah. Instagram. No, we, it's great. Let's see. What, what is it? Alexander.Mendoza1. That's my handle. That Yeah. I've changed it a few times. Perfect. But Alexander Mendoza, you can find me. I look Perfect. really serious in my picture. You know what? I'll, I'll, uh, I'll put a link uh, in the show notes. Cool. So, all right, Alex, I thank you so much and uh, look forward to hearing uh, music from you and, and many more adventures. Thanks for having me. Hey, if you want to know more about me and get more singing tips, etc., please visit my website, johnhenny.com, and be sure to sign up for my email list. Um, I send out emails regularly. I let people know when there are new podcasts and also when I have new products and certain things coming out. So be sure to sign up for that. And if you are interested in learning to belt and you have aims to be a musical theater performer yourself, I would suggest you check out my Boldly Belting course, boldlybelting.com. I've uh, come up with some rather unique ways to help you learn to belt and get your voice dialed in. And until next time, to better singing. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.